welcome to Brian Stevens Memorial. We're glad that you're here. My name is Pastor David Turner, and I had the privilege of being Brian's pastor as well as David Carroll's pastor. And we're here to remember Brian. We're so glad that you're here. So many, obviously, that you knew him and uh, he touched your life. So thank you for being here. We're here to remember him, and we're here to honor him and the life that he lived. We're grieving because he's not with us anymore. And yet we don't grieve without hope. We grieve, but we grieve with hope. As the Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians 4, he says, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. See, Brian, he had put his trust in Jesus. And so even though he's not with us, we know that he's with the Lord, that he's alive, and that he's whole in the presence of God. And so we grieve, but we grieve with hope. I know when I heard about Brian's passing, I was, my first reaction was, was grief and was a bit of anger as well. You know, he such a remarkable man. He would uh, lead. Wor he would uh, do worship at our church on Sundays, and the Sunday before he went to be with the Lord, he was there up front, worshiping the Lord. Uh, you can see his guitar here, his hat, and uh, it just got me when I came in this morning. And you know, you ask him, "How are you doing, Brian?" And he had such a good. At I'm doing good. He didn't want to. You know, he didn't want to say how he felt, although I'm sure he was in pain. And, going through things, and yet that Sunday, he's there worshiping, and so it was a shock, I know for many of you it was probably a shock, there was a bit of, a kind of an anger, I personally hate cancer, and yet as I had that sense of grief hit me, on the inside, I had a joy rise inside of me, that he was with the Lord, it's a kind of an odd feeling, a feeling of grief and joy at the same time. And it wasn't a, just a joy that he was with the Lord, but I felt that Jesus was joyful because he loves Brian. And Brian's now with him. And so that joy, that hope, doesn't diminish our grief, but it transforms it. And we can come to the Lord, and we can, even today and, and every day after this, we can come to the Lord with that grief, and we can allow Him to transform that grief as we give the Lord our sorrow, as we give to the Lord our memories, our sadness, and the Lord can transform that and fill us with His hope and His joy. And that's what we're doing here today. We're inviting the Lord to help us to release those things to Him and allow Him to transform our grief into hope and joy. Really, in the days coming, in the months coming, in the years coming, you'll remember Him. And there will be that sense of sadness or longing to see him. And yet in the midst of that, there can be that hope and that joy. And so let's begin today with inviting the Lord to be with us. If you pray with me. Father, we thank you that you are the God who comforts. You're the God who is ever present and you're with us. And we thank you that you're here right now. And you're walking with us in this moment and throughout this whole process of grief. And I pray that you would come, that you would fill us with that hope, that you would reveal yourself. I pray that you would even help us to remember things that we may have forgotten about uh, Brian and help us to honor him and lift up that memory. And I pray that there, in the midst of tears, in the midst of uh, remembering that there would be laughter, there would be joy. In Jesus' name, amen. So, like I said, we want to begin by remembering Brian and honoring him. And so, I'd like to invite Cheryl Ray up, Brian's brother, to begin. And in just a moment, we'll invite you as well to share your memories and stories and words of honor that you have. But before we do, I'd like Cheryl to share some things. Thank you. 
Can you hear me if I speak up loud enough? Yeah. Sorry. Okay, first I'd like to thank you all for coming. And I'm warning you that I'm horrible at public speaking, so just bear with me um, as I have a few things uh, to share. Uh, my dad and stepmom couldn't make the trip from Salt Lake today because of health issues. Uh, they emailed us a bunch of pictures that you can see at the Cornerstone House where we're going to have the reception after the service. Uh, they also asked that I read the following on their behalf. Dear Brian, our big huggable teddy bear, it is hard to find words large enough to carry the depth of our love for having the privilege of sharing special life moments with you. When Grandma Sandy and Grandma Margaret brought you and Cheryl to Iowa each summer to visit us, we all had such a wonderful time playing cards and going to ball games. You were always bigger than life. Just being in the same room with you was always a loving time filled with laughter. What a quick wit you possessed. I can imagine you with your mother, both sets of grandparents, and Annette sharing your funnies in heaven. Your father and I miss you greatly. We are so grateful that we will be joining you. When I was a young woman, I was asked to give a talk on the word eternal. I learned more preparing for this short talk than the people listening to me. Eternal simply means without beginning and without end. What we know and who we are has always been and will always be. That knowledge helps us accept things we cannot understand. I know for certain that you shared this physical life with us for a great purpose. This purpose will continue forever. We have learned so much from you. You have a pure heart and are quick to love and easily willing to share. These are just a few of the many wonderful things we have learned by sharing with you. We will truly miss you. We remember when you drove up to St. George, Utah to spend a few days with us. I had cooked a pork roast dinner. You asked if we had had carnitas. I said, no, we hadn't. So you and I went to the store to get the other ingredients, and you taught me how to make delicious carnitas. I had made tacos since I was a teen, but to put shredded pork, lettuce, tomatoes, white cheese, and green chili sauce inside a tortilla was a brand new experience for me. During those few days, we watched sports on TV, talked about sports, played cards, and laughed till our sides ached. You even found time to do a round of golf. What a shock that is. Uh, we also talked about the wonderful time we had in St. George when Cheryl, Dave, Kelly, Ben, Rich, you and I shared a large condo. You taught us new card games and kept us laughing till we couldn't keep our eyes open. Your dad still laughs whenever we start talking about it. Brian, you and I have spent many hours together, just the two of us, pouring our hearts out. I treasure these talks because I treasure you. Your wonderful talent for music has brought joy to thousands of people. When we had Kelly's wedding reception, you and our bishop, bishop, Roger Smith, teamed up to provide such joyful music. We are sure that you are now playing your music for all the other spirits in your circle. All our love, Mom and Dad. Sorry. It's funny that although Pat and I wrote completely independent of one another, we will touch on many of the same things. Pastor Dave just said, I didn't write a lot, so I'm hoping that when I'm done, some of you will share some of your stories or thoughts about Brian. Um, since the majority of you met Brian as adults, I thought I would share a few stories from our childhood. Mom, Brian, and I lived with my mom's parents growing up, and my grandparents were real troopers. They pretty much let Brian and I keep any type of animal or critter we brought home. We always had dogs and cats, but we also had rabbits, guinea pigs, mice, lizards, snakes, tarantulas, salamanders, and frogs, to name a few. We always had a lot of fun with our animals, except for a few occasions, like when the snake got lost in the house for two weeks, or when the aquarium lid fell in and 30 tiny water frogs ended up in Grandma's bathroom in the middle of the night. Brian and I thought that was funny. Grandma didn't. Our summers were the best growing. We had a pool, so we swam almost every day, and many of the neighborhood kids would join us. We had a large front yard of grass, and we played a lot of a game we called pickle. It's like in baseball when a runner gets caught between first and second base, and you toss the ball back and forth trying to tag him out, and the runner is trying to make it back safely to one of the bases. We also used the front yard for golf, but not in the traditional sense. We would hit, I think they were called peachy balls, which are essentially golf ball-sized wiffle balls. In our game, the goal, the goal was to hit them over the house. I was too small, but Brian could hit them over the house into the backyard, and then we would go on a hunt to find them and then do it all over again. 
This was a fun game until one day Brian let go of the golf club and it went over the house and got stuck in the top of the oak tree in the backyard. I still don't know how Grandpa got the club out of the tree, but needless to say, we didn't play that game again. I could go on and on with childhood stories involving dog biscuits, mayonnaise, baseball bats, rusty darts, tennis rackets, dirt clods, erasers, black lights, and stitches. Actually, quite a few with stitches. I think the people at the emergency room knew my mom's first name. Anyway, in a nutshell, we had fun. My brother was a big guy with a huge heart. He loved people, kids, animals. He loved hiking, bowling, golfing. He loved watching sports on TV, and that is an understatement. <coughs> there wasn't a day that went by when he lived with us that he didn't watch sports. When he wasn't watching sports, he was watching old movies or one of his newest favorites, Duck Dynasty. <laughs> he loved doing the Sunday Tribune Crossword Puzzle and his most